Hello? Hi, Owen. Did you get what I sent you? How did you... I've just been informed that you qualify as a hero candidate. Maniac is one of our favorite new Netflix original series this year. This brain-scrambling sci-fi dramedy is one of the most complex and well-crafted shows of 2018. This series was directed by Carrie Fukunaga and stars Emma Stone and Jonah Hill as two damaged individuals who volunteer for a clinical trial and find themselves bound together on a surreal journey. Along this 10-episode journey, there are many references and callbacks scattered throughout by the show's creators. I'm Emily, here to break down 16 of our favorite Easter eggs, callbacks, references, and clues from Maniac. This show has plenty more, so for the complete list, check out the full gallery on GameSpot in the description below. Quick warning, this video definitely contains spoilers. Before I dissect Maniac, make sure to subscribe to GameSpot Universe and check out our video, Doctor Who Explained, to learn all about the sci-fi series. The numbers 1 and 9 are the numbers that Owen and Annie are assigned in the experiment, and they recur throughout the show. References include Owen and Annie's names. Owen spells 1 when you eliminate the W and reorder the N and E, while Annie spells 9 when you reorder the letters and drop the A. Bruce's license plate is 01991A. There is a 1 on Bruce's football shirt, and there is a 9 of hearts that Owen pulls out during episode 5's magic trick. Bruce and Linda's street number is 901. The phone number on Annie's lost dog poster is 212-196-1638. And the address for the mobster mortuary in episode 7 is 1101. Owen's surname is Milgram, a reference to Stanley Milgram, a social psychologist who performed controversial behavioral experiments in the 1960s that were inspired by the Nazis' influence and control over the German population. He subsequently wrote about his findings in Obedience to Authority, in which he claimed that, quote, the major problem for the subject is to recapture control of his own regnant processes once he has committed them to the purposes of the experimenter. Ooh, that's scary. <laughs> Don't eat those pills. Annie stops outside the Milgram Industries building to look through a pile of discarded junk. She picks up a Rubik's Cube and throws it on the ground. Owen stops to pick it up before heading into the building. In episode 9, Owen as Snorri rescues the test subjects from Gerda by solving a Rubik's Cube. Six sides, six stages. Annie also picks up Miguel de Cervantes' classic book, Don Quixote from the Junk. References to Don Quixote occur throughout the show. In episode 4, we see Annie as Linda reading the book to Nan. Popcorn is a recurring theme. The term popcorn problems first occurs as a joke when Owen is on the phone to Neberdeen. He asks the woman taking his details to repeat the phrase, and she says, Prostate problems, yes. Later in the episode, we see kernels popping as Owen feeds pigeons, shortly after Grimson tells him, Pattern is the pattern. In episode 9, the small metal recall trigger that Annie removes from Snorri's nose transforms into a popcorn. Popcorn problems. We see a neon sign at a bridge advertising Snorri Agnerson's Icelandic fish. In episode 9, Owen becomes Snorri Agnerson during the Pill C trial. During Annie's Pill A reflection, she remembers the event that led up to her sister Ellie's death. The pair of them are seen watching a fantasy movie, during which Ellie pretends to be an elf and refers to them as Anya and Elia. Anya, I'm Elia, your cursed elven sister. Rescue me. <laughs> From what? <laughs> From a normal life. That is all on you. The entire fantasy scenario plays out in Episode 7 and 8. Episode 2 is Tilted Windmills. This is another reference to Don Quixote, who fights windmills in the book, believing them to be ferocious giants. In the scene where Annie refuels her car, we see a windmill in the background. During Owen's possibly faked Pill A reflection, we see Jed serenade Adelaide with the police song Every Breath You Take. And every move you make which, lyrically, is a very creepy song about a stalker. Miramoto asks Owen, so Sting was at this party? Owen's mom is played by Trudy Styler, who is Sting's wife in real life. The VR porn floppy disks that Azumi sees in Manal Ray's apartment are named after Fukunaga's previous shows and movies, including Sin No. 3, which is a reference to Sin Nobre, True Erection, which is a play on True Detective, Beasts of Urination, 
aka Beasts of No Nation, and Jane Derriere, which refers to Jane Eyre. I thought we had agreed. He wouldn't bother me while I was working. While Owen as Bruce waits in the car outside the Naslin house, he starts to read a Greta Manelray book. We see Olivia, the girl Owen was once obsessed with, pictured and described as his, quote, emotional poltergeist. The memory of Olivia will return to haunt him throughout the show. Owen drives two cars in separate simulations, Bruce's Volvo in Episode 4 and his flaming gangster Mercedes in Episode 7. We see both of these cars next to each other in the garage towards the end of Episode 10. Hey James, it's this one. In that scene, the flame car ends up being a Zoomies car. Oli and Arlie Hightower are both searching for the legendary lost final chapter of Don Quixote at the Neverdean Mansion seance. Arlie quotes Cervantes and says the quote is from his 1615 masterpiece. 1615 is when Don Quixote was originally published. Legend has it, reading this chapter will bring your fantasies to life. Cervantes thought the opposite. He said being lost like that was a fate worse than death. We hear Azumi mention the need to avoid creating McMurphys, which are test subjects left in a permanently catatonic state. The reference derives from the movie One Flew Over the Cuckoo's Nest, in which Jack Nicholson's character Randall McMurphy is lobotomized near the end of the movie. The title of episode 7 translates as This Is Not a Drill. It comes from a painting by Belgian surrealist painter Magritte called The Treachery of Images. The painting depicts a pipe under which a caption reads, Ceci n'est pas un pipe, translated to mean this is not a pipe. We see a version of the painting on the wall of the basement, with a drill replacing the pipe. The drill being the favorite tool of torture and murder used by Owen's father when he's depicted as a psychotic mob boss. But of course there's a double meaning here too. The phrase this is not a drill can be seen as a reference to the fact that Owen is now onto the pill C stage of the trial, and there's no going back from where it will ultimately lead him. The use of Magritte is also notable because his surrealist works question perception and one's sense of reality. There are many movie references throughout the entire series as well. The style of the clinic dining area looks very similar to the set design in Alien. Annie's and Owen's final escape is very reminiscent of The Graduate. The influence of Doctor Strange Love can be seen in the United Nations scenes. The fantasy sequences were an homage to The Lord of the Rings. And Raising Arizona was the inspiration for Bruce and Linda's lemur adventures. In case you didn't catch all those Easter eggs and references, this show is definitely worth a rewatch. What was your favorite Easter egg or reference in the show? Let us know in the comments, and thanks for watching.